Good morning, sir. My name is Zitika. I am going to give a presentation on study on Turing machine and its application. The contents that I'm going to cover are firstly what a Turing machine is, then I'm going to talk about the data structure of a Turing machine, uh, and then I'll tell something about the Turing thesis, and uh, then I'll also discuss the application of Turing machine, then I'll explain the working of Turing machine with the help of example, and then the conclusion. In this slide, I'm going to tell what a Turing machine is. So it was invented by Alan Turing in the year 1936. And this machine is considered more powerful than the pushdown automata and the finite automata. And the reasons will be discussed uh, in the further slides. Also, this class of, uh, the class of languages that this machine accepts is recursively innumerable languages. Now I'm going to tell the basic data structure of a Turing machine, which consists of an infinite tape as its memory. In this figure, we can see uh, this thing. Now this thing is called as the tape. As we can see that this tape goes infinitely long and it consists of many infinite symbols. And all, it also consists of the blanks. So that is why we can say that it is a better memory device. Now the alphabet set could consist of zero, one, E, B, or any symbol. And, but the, uh, the blank does not belong to this alphabet set. Now, this tape consists of, the, of a main part, which is called as the tape head. As we can see in this figure that this tape head is pointing to one of the symbols inside, present inside the tape. Now, this tape head can perform three, uh, three functions. Firstly, it can read and update any symbol on which it, it's present. For example, in this case, it's present above A. So it can read the A, it can read A and it can also update the value of A. For example, it can change uh, the value of A to B. Now, this is an important um, uh, advantage of a uh, Turing machine, which is not present in the pushdown automata and the um, finite automata. That is, it can update the value on which it is present. Also, this tape head can move to the left and to the right of the tape according to its requirement. So, after the tape of the Turing machine, Control, po control portion of Turing machine is also a very important part of it. So control portion is basically the control unit of Turing machine. It controls all the uh, programs and all the functions of a Turing machine and it's connected to the tape head. It is similar to a finite state machine or a, a push down automata, but it is not a finite state machine or a push down automata. It has similar properties. It's somewhat similar, but it's not that. Secondly, it is deterministic in nature, and hence it's uh, it's a very important part of the Turing machine, and it controls all the functions of a Turing machine. So, a Turing machine consists of seven tuples. Firstly, Q, which defines the finite set of uh, states in a machine, and then the alphabet symbol, which uh, consists of all the uh, symbols in the machine. Now, the head is star which basically uh, consists of all the symbols that are present on the tape. For example, um, here we can see that all these symbols are present here. So these all symbols are, uh, uh, are present in the set of tau. So it also the tau also consists of the blank and the extra symbols. Like if we exchange or if we replace any symbol here, uh, if we replace the symbol A with B, uh, or X. So that X or B will also be considered in the set of tau. And we can say that uh, this tau is a subset of the alphabet set, uh, but the alphabet set cannot contain the blank symbols. Now, this Q0 uh, defines the initial state uh, of the machine and B is the blank symbol, that is this. And uh, F is the set of final state that uh, accepts the state or rejects the state. Now, this shows the transition states. Uh, so, firstly, here Q is that Q0 is where the tape head is present, where it can read, write, or uh, read and update, or it, from where it can move. Uh, that uh, state is called as the Q0. Then, this A head is the input symbol. Then, it moves to the Q, which is the next state. So this tape head can either remain on the same state or it can move to the next state or it can move to the next state. Yeah. 
uh, and then this uh, shows the uh, symbol with which it's replaced. So for example, here, if A is replaced with X, so we, we'll write this. And then we'll uh, show that uh, either the tape head will move to the right or it will move to the left. So we just write that here. Now, in the case of, as we know, in the case of a standard uh, Turing machine, corresponding to one input, we have uh, only one choice, like either that uh, tape head can move to the right or that tape head can move to the left. But in the case of non-deterministic, uh, non if we have this as input symbol, now this can move to the uh, right and it can move to the left. It has two choices corresponding to one input. So, and therefore the, uh, therefore it's a, uh, transition becomes to the power two to the power q then uh tau and left right but in the case of deterministic corresponding to one input this a can move either to right or to the left so this slide basically states the theory during thesis so it states that any computation can be carried out by mechanical means that can be uh, performed by some Turing machine. So this statement really proves that how powerful a Turing machine is as compared to the push-down automata and the uh, finite automata. And we have two arguments that support these theses. That is firstly, anything that can be done on an existing digital computer can also be done on Turing machines. This basically means that if anything is possible on any existing digital computer right now, that thing can also be processed and done on the Turing machine. Secondly, for the problems for which an algorithm can be written, Turing machine can also be designed for the same. This basically means that if that if there exists any algorithm for a problem, then then uh, that same problem can also be written in Turing machine program. So all these uh, both of these statements support the thesis and thus prove how the uh, how powerful the uh, Turing machine is. So now I'm going to discuss some of the applications of Turing machine. Now, uh, uh, so the applications of Turing uh, machine are based on some of the properties of Turing machine. So firstly, when a Turing machine starts, the machine may accept that state, the machine may reject that state or machine may loop in that state. So by looping means that the, by looping we mean that the uh, machine does not stop, it does not halt. Okay, so we also need to know what a decider is. So Turing machine that does not halt on, on inputs or input strings are called, is called as a decider. And as they always make a decision to accept or to reject, a decider that recognizes some language is said to decide that language. So these were the properties on which the application of uh, the Turing machine is based. So moving on to the first application. So in numerator, it's a machine which inherits some of the properties from Turing machine. For example, it uh, it consists of an infinite tape. It has finite state control. Now, these both are also a part of the Turing machine. By infinite tape, we mean that we have two infinite tapes. Firstly, the control alphabet tape, and secondly, the printer alphabet tape. Now, we also have a work tape. Um, uh, so this work tape is initially empty and then it produces a string which is printed by the printer and this uh, enumerator machine can also consist of duplicate values and it can also print string in any order. This enumerator inherits uh, properties from the Turing machine. So we can say that this enumerator is, a, uh, is an application of the Turing machine. So these are some more applications of the Turing machine. So Turing machine acts as a recognizer, acceptor, and generator. Firstly, it can be used for storage of strings like string with alternate symbols. So as it consists of a tape, which has infinite memory, therefore a Turing machine can store string with alternate symbol as it's easy to remember for it. Secondly, it can be used for multiple tracks. For example, it can be used to check whether a string is prime or not, because it consists of infinite memory. Whereas if we take the case of finite automata, it has finite memory. Therefore, it is not possible for it to check whether a string is prime or not. Thirdly, 
uh, checking of symbols. For example, to check whether a string is palindrome or not. Therefore, it's easy for uh, for Turing machine to check whether it's palindrome or not because it has fine infinite memory and it can also update the value uh, on which the tail head is present. Therefore, all these advantages make easy for Turing uh, machine to uh, to check for palindromes. So these were the some more applications of Turing machine. So here I'll explain the working of a Turing machine with this within simple example. With a simple example, so uh, a to the power n, b to the power n, where the number of a's is equal to the number of b's. So so first the hair the tape head is at a. It starts from a as soon as uh, as soon as it sees a. Now this a is replaced with x. Now the pointer uh, starts moving to the right. As we can see, a is replaced with x, and the pointer starts moving to the right. Now we are not bothered bothered about these a's. We need just first we need to reach the uh, first we need to reach the b. So as soon as we encounter b, the b is changed to by. So this b is changed to by, and we are not going to change these a's and just keep moving to the right. Therefore. These a's remain the same, and the pointer is just moved to the right. Now, when we have changed this b to y, we'll start. We start moving uh, the tape head to the left. Now, uh, when we move this tape head to the left, <clears throat> uh, it, it will start moving, and we are again not bothered about the a's that we encounter here. So we'll just uh, keep moving this tape head to the left hand side, and then again when we'll reach x, uh, so we'll stop there. So now as we have reached x here, we'll just stop, and we are not we are not going to change that. We'll just uh, uh, input x again and uh, again and start moving ahead. Now, when we uh, uh, now this process is again repeated, and then we come here again. Now, again we encounter a. Now, this a is again changed to x. Now, this a is also changed to x, and the pointer starts moving to the right. Now, as it starts moving to the right, we are not bothered about this a, and we uh, keep it the same. Now, when we encounter uh, uh, now we will encounter y here. Now, when we'll encounter y here, we will not change it this y, and we'll instruct the tape head to move to the right. So, uh, we'll instruct this tape head to move to the right, and then we'll encounter this b, and this b will change to y. Now, this y, now this tape head will now start moving to the left side again. Now, uh, where first here it will encounter y also. So. When it for this we have shown this, so when it will encounter y, we won't change this y, and we'll instruct the point, uh, the pointer to move to the left. Now, uh, then it will move to the left, and when it will, and, and when it will uh, see another x, it will stop, and then it will, uh, will come here, and then it will instruct the tail head to the tape head to move ahead. Which is this, and then when it will encounter a, it will again be changed to x. Now this will be also changed to x, and this will start moving to the right again. Now again, we will not be bothered by this y, and we we'll just keep moving forward until we reach this y, uh, this b, and this will also be changed to y, and then we we'll, uh, and this then this pointer will. Reach again here. Now, here after x, it will encounter y. So, so this means that the uh, number of x are, x that is the number of a's are over. Therefore, we'll uh, move to the next state, keeping the y same. And therefore, we'll just instruct the tape head to keep moving on to the right. And uh, so, 
So the Y will remain same and the tape head will keep moving on to the right until it reaches the blank. And then uh, from blank, it can go either to right or it can go either to the left because it doesn't matter as we have received our string that is three A's. So uh, as the number of A's is three, then the number of B's is also three. So as we have received our, th uh, our string, so the uh, blank uh, so the tape head can now move to the left or the right and this is the design for this a to the power n and b to the power n string so in, in the end i would like to say that we have seen how uh, powerful this turing machine is and how it is advantageous over the pushdown automata and finite automata thank you